Hello, I'm Michelle Cortens, the tree fruit specialist at Perennia who envisioned the Orchard Tools app. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the tool to record data and how it can be useful to track the fruit growth rate. Because research has shown that fruit growth rate can help predict if fruit will drop or persist in response to a chemical thinner. So we'll start out on the main screen here on the app where we'll choose the fruit diameter tool. And we're going to create a new project where we can record the data. So to create a new project, choose the button on the bottom of the screen. We're presented with a window to enter the tree variety and a block or location. So be sure to pick a unique identity just so you know where to find it in the field uh, afterwards. So I'm going to use this project for monitoring Honeycrisp in my East Kentville block. So I'll uh, type that in. And because we're recording data for our use on the farm, we're not going to use the research option for this project, so you can just leave it toggled off. And then you can hit save. The year is added to the title automatically because new projects should be started each year. Now that we've created a project, we're in the project screen for Honeycrisp East Kentville. And we can start collecting data. So we'll choose Collect Data, and we're prompted to enter a collection date. Today's date is automatically populated, so I'll choose Create Date. On the first date, this reminder pops up because it's letting us know that we're building a template that will be used on all future dates, and it means we should select the fruitlets now that we intend to monitor over time. So make sure you select and number the clusters so that when you come back to the field it's easy to pick up and measure the same fruitlets over time. So I know some people have used uh, flagging tape, other people use uh, colored clothespins, and then they mark it with a permanent marker and they also mark the fruit with permanent marker to number everything. So you can access this reminder again in the help menu later. Now that we're here, you can see that we've got a nice big keyboard for entering the diameter of the fruit, and we have this option to include a decimal as well, depending on how precise you want to be with your measurements. Now I'm in the orchard at the tree that I've labeled number one, and diameter is usually measured using a digital caliper, so I've got that on hand. And now that I put it on the fruit, the caliper says that it's 5 millimeters in diameter. So we'll enter that value and press save. Then it automatically moves on to the next fruitlet. The sound is built in to reassure us that we've pressed the button. Just above the keyboard there, you can see the tree cluster and fruit number that we're currently entering. So you can see that the fruit number has changed to a number 2. As we move along, we enter the diameter for all five fruit in a cluster, and then it automatically moves us onto the next cluster. If a fruit is missing, just save a zero in its place to indicate that you haven't missed a measurement. Okay, now that we've recorded the diameters for 10 clusters on the first tree, we're ready to move on to the next tree. Use the next tree button. You should enter as many fruitlets and trees as you plan to track for fruit growth rate. Because once you've entered the first day of data, and you begin entering a second date of data, you won't be able to go back and add any more fruit to the template. You'll also need to make sure that when you finish, you end on the last fruit of the last cluster. In other words, don't leave any clusters unfinished. So when we're done data entry, we can close the keyboard because the data is saved automatically. So now that we've got the first day of data, let's say that we've come back another day and we want to measure those fruitlets again to see how much they've grown. So in our diameter tool, we can enter a new collection date. And then you can see here that we've already got all the fruit that were measured last time that are identified for us. Now we can simply go through and enter the diameters for those fruit on the second date. And we can repeat this process several times to track the fruit growth rate over time. Going up to the project options, whenever we like, we can export the data. And this will take everything we've recorded in this project so far, and it'll generate a single exported CSV file. And this is like a file that you would generally open in Excel. And I'm going to email it to myself so I can open it on my computer. 
So now we're at my computer and I've opened the file from my email. There it is with all of our measurements on all of the dates that were created. File name is what you named the project in the app. And you'll notice that any data input as zero for a missing fruitlet is automatically changed to a blank space as required by the model. And that model is called the Predicting Fruit Set model. It was developed by Dr. Dwayne Green at UMass, and the spreadsheet was then designed by Phil Schwalier with Michigan State University Extension. So to get a copy of the model, visit apples.msu.edu and click on the tab for horticulture. When you scroll down the page, find the thinning section and you'll find the predicting fruit set model. So now that we have the predicting fruit set model open here and we have the CSV file generated from the Orchard Tools app on the right, we can copy and paste our data into the input page of the model, making sure to line up with the appropriate tree and cluster identities because I've recorded 10 clusters per tree, but the model allows up to 15 clusters per tree. The data automatically fills out all of the appropriate cells for the model, and then you can use the model as you normally would. The Orchard Tools app will help you move away from the clipboard to input data digitally, so I hope that this video has given you a good idea of how you can use this handheld tool to record fruit diameter over time and use it in tandem with the predicting fruit set model.